Hello everyone. I want to speak in this video to the specific evolutionary dynamics of Mars and Leo opposite Pluto and Aquarius to kind of get more into the nuance of this. So you can think of the position of Pluto as symbolizing where the evolutionary catalyst is. Like the position of Pluto is where we're threatened and challenged relative to our deepest fears and our insecurities. So the deeper psychological content, it's what's arising with that Pluto and Aquarius position. Then we can think of Mars opposite that is where we're then called into action and response, conscious self-leadership. And that's going to bring us face to face with where we are most afraid. So let's define these dynamics and understand where the evolutionary growth is. Pluto and Aquarius on one level speaks to the evolutionary push to liberate from the precedent of who we've known ourselves to be. The underlying evolutionary dynamics of the signature says who we are as a soul is fundamentally greater than and beyond the framework of anything that we've currently known. So this can be pushing up against our own status quo, who we've known ourselves to be, the way that we've been suppressing our own feelings, individuality, our own soul essence. And the other dimension is where it's pushing up against our identification with our groups, our people, our friends, where we want to belong, where we don't want to stand out too much, to our fear of creating polarization, of being different, of setting us apart from our friends, our family, our different communities. That can be a deep fear arising with Pluto and Aquarius in general. So now you take this and you trigger it, you kind of activate it through this opposition with Mars and Leo. Let me just say this first thing. Any opposition to Pluto by its very nature emphasizes a perceived duality, right? There's going to be some dimension of, oh, I want to be this or I'm feeling this, but then there's this, right? So when we look at the Leo Aquarius polarity, we're essentially looking at the uh, tension of individual destiny, who I want to be, my own sense of purpose, entitlement, my dignity, my right for entitlement to live a good life and self-actualize, that ends with, oh, but what am I risking? Everything that I've known, what will they think of me? Will I belong? Will I be canceled? Will I fit in anymore? So the, the, the polarization here can really induce a deep sense of, on the one hand, fear, an intense permeating fear of acting, of standing up for oneself, of being true to oneself, of living the dignity and self-respect of being true to one's own soul program because of the consequences. You might get tomatoes thrown at you, you might get flowers. You might be adored, seen as bold and courageous, or people might ridicule you and embarrass you. For many souls, if we're not centered and grounded in our own soul, then the comings and the goings of fame and fortune and infamy and being despised will feel very uncomfortable. We're going to feel very affected by, oh, they like me, good, I'm okay. Or, oh, they don't like me, I, sh I don't want to say that, right? Our ground, our strength will not be in our soul. And so action will feel very scary. And the other end of that would be a sort of pride and self-righteousness. I'm right. This is who I am. This is what I stand for. You or you people are wrong, right? A pride and a self-entitlement. And we can see that any time that we have, you know, an argument or debate with someone who is on the political other side or sees differently than us. How easy it is to become very charred and self-righteous in our own rightness. Now, these are just two opposite sides of the same coin. Being afraid to be true to ourselves and then where that being true to ourselves becomes almost like an arrogant, I'm better than you. So this is where that polarity kind of becomes a purification process. Because that polarization is going to bring up all the ways in which our activation, standing in our strength, will then bring us to meet the psychological resistance to our own evolutionary growth by way of either of those polarities. The invitation is to kind of go beyond the perceived dualities of this polarity and understand that, one, no one's better than anyone else. I'm not more or less entitled to actualize my own potential and my own deserving for a good life, to creatively actualize my purpose. Standing in my strength is never, will never belittle or take away from you standing in your strength. There has to be a ground in that consciousness such that I can give myself permission to actualize and be vigilant to not make myself better than. 
and then all the impulses to make myself better than are actually just gonna point to and kind of purify where I don't know my own freedom. Because I think my freedom will require that I defeat you. So that's not real freedom, it's actually fear and littleness. Likewise, standing in my strength will bring up all of my fear of social consequence. What will others think? Will I be canceled? Will I be liked? Will I be hated? And thus that itself purifies where we're attached. And this whole evolutionary journey essentially is the exhaustion of desire. Our desires are fundamentally rooted in, I need that external acceptance. So that can purify that and we can come more deeply into come what may, I will be true to myself. And there's this beautiful example of a uh, man, I'll post his, his name here. I don't remember how to pronounce his name, Matawi or something. I'll put it up. He's a beautiful soul. I have heard he's actually a meditator, a Buddhist. He comes from the West Bank. Not that those things inherently matter, but just to point out like the essence of this being is like so committed to love and peace. He experienced the, um, when he was a kid, his, his friend was killed point blank by an IDF soldier right next to him. His own family members who are completely innocent, didn't commit any crime, not terrorists, not Hamas. They were also killed by IDF. He's an example of a soul who by all measures of how the world thinks should be a hateful person. And this is the stuff that Hamas is made out of. You should be a hateful and resentful person, but through the journey of his own pain, he decided to step into his strength and his commitment to love. And his whole journey, his whole effort, his whole message is not just peace and the rights for the Palestinian people, but it's for everyone. He's even made that quote, freedom is not real unless it's for everyone. And he has many Jewish friends, Jewish allies, and he's absolutely against all hatred and anti-Semitism. That's not what he stands for. He's just like a deeply committed soul, very energetically, very similar to Gandhi. So as you can imagine, this is about to go. He was recently arrested for unknown reasons. When he was going after 10 years of trying to become a citizen, during that visit, he was arrested by ICE and is currently being detained. So this is a great example and a role model, uh, Mars and Leo, a role model for someone that's willing to stand in their strength, open their heart, be courageous, but refuse to hate, refuse to be better than, but also refuse to stay, to stay smaller than. I think this is an invitation for all of us. And as I've shared in a recent video, often the challenges and the stresses of our life of not knowing our strength, not being able to say no, not being able to say what we need to say, to go for what we want to, um, being victimized, being persecuted, oftentimes that becomes the necessary impetus for us to really generate the desire to know our strength. And it's then and only then that we are actually able to meet these times and the evolutionary pulse of this time in a way that serves our own evolutionary growth. It's a de personal desire, personal determination to evolve no matter what, which is the bottom line. No matter what, I will not be victimized. No matter what, I will not allow myself to enter into fear or better than or shy away out of fear of what may happen to me. So this Mars and Leo opposite Pluto and Aquarius when we're willing to be who we are and follow our soul guide, our soul curriculum, whatever that is, whatever that looks like, only then I think we can truly rest in peace. We can trust our destiny and trust what may come, what may go, because we're at rest in our, in our own conscience. We only generate guilt or depression when we either respectively act in a way to harm or violate other people or we repress our natural impulse to actualize guilt or depression. But when we're being ourselves and true to our own soul program, we can feel peace inside. And only then can we say, I trust what will happen because I know who I am. I know where I'm coming from. Now, I wanna add another nuance to this. And this is a very sensitive and real topic that I earnestly want to bring up. I've been trying for a while to find the right way to articulate this. So I'm gonna give it my best shot. I'll start here. I was recently watching a video from a man who was still currently a hostage being taken by Hamas in Gaza. And there's a video released deeply deprived, deeply in pain, deeply suffering, sending a message to his children. One child who's five now and probably hasn't seen him since he was three uh, to his wife. And just like thinking about him brings up a lot of sadness and pain. Now, 
I looked at the comments of that video and I noticed most of the comments were very degrading, right? We're like, that's nothing like what many of the Palestinian detainees uh, experience in Israel. It's nothing like what the children of Gaza have suffered. Now, what is a natural human open-hearted response to seeing someone going through suffering? It's compassion. It's compassion. It is not to step away and say, yeah, but look at those people from the other side. And it's almost as if we're afraid to have empathy or compassion for one side over the other in that it will be perceived, Pluto, Aquarius, them, the group, will be seen as supporting one cause over another. And then we close our hearts. And I myself have often spoken to the suffering of the people in Gaza and Palestinian people in the West Bank. And that's often been met with, how can you speak to this as a Jew? How could you not remember the, what happened on October 7th? What about all the Jews who have been killed by suicide bombings and violence for however many years? And it's like right there. That's like the, the temptation to become partisan, to become sides, right? I'm looking for where's the real healing? Right? Where's the solution? Where's the way out of this suffering? My cause is never going to be to the degradation or the dismissing of your cause and your people. And I don't want my people to not be aware of your people. And this was my argument or my general distaste right now for the ritual of the Passover Seder. We spill blood for the Egyptian lives that were lost thousands of years ago when we were exiled from Egypt, right? To me, that's very meaningless if we can't also appreciate that us as a Jewish people seeking our own liberation and actualization means nothing if it's on the suffering and on this despair and the degradation of Palestinian people. It means absolutely nothing to me. Because it's not freedom. It's freedom in a bubble. It's that Leo Aquarius. Me and my people, we are self-actualized. We are superior. We deserve it, but you don't. And this mess that we are in, personally, collectively, will simply not heal until we're willing to get out of that me and mine mindset, that self-righteousness, that entitlement mindset. So the deeper teaching, the purification of the Leo Aquarius axis is I and we deserve to fully actualize and live our greatest potential, to actualize our creativity, to be alive, to enjoy our lives, to receive the rights that we have as an individual sovereign soul. And that these rights and this individuality, if we're embracing it, will and should never be in opposition to anyone else's right. And so it's an opening of the heart to step into our own light and then to be a role model and to shine, to express that. We need to find our voice, come into the clarity of our choice. What makes us come alive? What is the message? What is the truth? What is the purpose that brings us into resonance with our higher self that we can hold boldly and courageously that creates neither guilt nor depression belittles no one and nor ourself or falsely elevates ourself. These are the thoughts that I have about this Mars and Leo opposite Pluto in Aquarius. If you appreciate the teachings on this channel and want to learn how to read the transits and the needle chart in order to understand the underlying evolutionary dynamics at play, consider joining my training program. The live program for this year is still open for enrollment for another couple weeks. If you don't want to join the live cohort, you can also enroll in the self-study program. Check this out in the description below. You can also find a link to book a session with me and a subscription link to receive the articles that I'll often write along with these videos in your inbox. Thank you so much for watching.